the tears are for the people that recognized that I was struggling and didn't let me struggle alone. We're gonna talk about why I disappeared for almost a year. So what happened last year is I went through one of the most toughest years of my life. I felt like last year was like three or four years in one. I went through so many different like transformations in my life. I ended an almost 10 year relationship and it threw me on my ass. It truly was one of the hardest decisions I think I've ever had to make in my life. And at that point in time when I was really going through the height of it, I did not think. <laughs> I know people, I know this is gonna sound so dramatic, but I really didn't think that I was gonna survive it. I have never cried so much in my life. Me and crying were like this. If you're going through a devastating breakup like how I went through one, you're gonna be fine. I know it doesn't seem like it right now. It doesn't feel like it at all, but you are gonna be fine. I feel like I kind of just like retreated and I went into a little bit of like a hole for myself, especially when it happened. Cause it happened around, the, like it happened around the holidays of 2021 and I just like shut down. I didn't let anyone in, but I'm all, I've always kind of been like the type of person that doesn't let people in, which is not good. Don't do that. One thing I'm trying to change this year is being more honest about my feelings, not just to people in general, like friends and family that care about me, but to myself as well. I used to never let myself cry. I'm the oldest of seven, and my role was to be big sister and mom and be have it all together for everybody else. The residual effects of 2020 are still hitting us to this day. I think a lot of, like I heard that a lot of relationships were like falling apart in 2020, but I think some relationships held on and stayed stronger, but I kind of had a feeling that like my relationship wasn't doing the best in 2020, but you know, we kind of just like, was, we were trying to work through it and like fix the issues that were in re our relationships. All relationships have issues, but we were trying to work through it. And then finally, I just realized that like, we had just truly grown apart and thankfully we're still friends. And I really, like one of my biggest fear was losing that friendship relationship that we have. The morning of our actual romantic relationship was really hard on me, a lot harder than I expected. I thought I was gonna bounce back, you know? I've been, I've ended a long-term relationship before and I kind of bounced back from that ending a lot quicker and a lot easier. I mean, granted it was when I was like in my, it was when I was 21, but, um, this one was completely different. I think it's harder too when it's someone that's actually genuinely a good person. You know, like when you're, when that person is just, it's a, they're a good person, but you just realize that you guys just no longer work. It's so hard. I think I went through a bunch of self doubt. I went through a bunch of like, oh, am I making the right decision? And it was really hard for me. And I didn't let anyone in. Like I didn't, ugh, not the Candace fold. <laughs> Um, I knew this was gonna happen. I think this is why I put it off for so long. <laughs> I laugh through everything because like that's my, that's how I self-soothe, that's how I comfort myself. It's a way also for me to like push down the emotions and suppress them. All right, okay, we did that. So I think that's a reason, I think this is part of the reason why I put off talking about this for so long, as deep as I'm about to talk about it right now because <clears throat> I don't let people in and the tears are for the people that, the tears are for the people that recognized that I was struggling and didn't let me struggle alone. Okay, this might not be a makeup video. <laughs> this is the thing, I used to never cry. I used to like never let myself feel my emotions and now I'm just like, we're crying <laughs> and that's okay, you know. Tears can be happy tears Emotions can be good emotions, and these are good emotions. It's a good thing to like not let yourself bottle them up because I am a bottler. But yeah, I went through a really rough year and there were people in my corner that I didn't know were in my corner. One of my friends, one of my really close friends told me, she was like, <clears throat> I feel like when you go through stuff, you don't let me in, you don't talk to me. And I was just like, yeah, I know, like I struggle with that. And she's like, well, I really want you to talk to me. And that changed everything for me. And I'm so thankful for her and the way that she was able to, you know, bring, slowly bring me out of my hardened shell of like, I protect everyone else. I don't need someone to come and protect me. And um, it was exactly what I needed at the time. And now a year post breakup, I know like, I have made the right decision for myself. I felt like I was going through a divorce. 
<laughs> like it really felt like I was going through a divorce. We were like figuring out co-parenting the dogs and everything. And it was just, it was not a fun time for me. And that's part of the reason why I just disappeared. I had to go on like a heavy spiritual journey um, last year. I, I just needed to like take care of myself. And I did that. And I'm thankful that I had the ability to kind of just like slow down so much on work and slow down so much on creating content. Like I said, back then I wasn't really comfortable expressing my feelings and emotions and let alone coming online and crying on the internet, you know? <laughs> I think one thing I noticed that I do is I downplay my feelings a lot. Like if I'm going through struggles or if I'm going through pain or hurt, I downplay it because it's easier that way. I've I've found that like I try not to be a burn it, burden on people. I'm usually really good about being there for pe other people, but I never let people be there for me. And now I've just kind of been like, I'm, my goal for this year is if I'm struggling or if I'm hurting and someone asks me how I'm doing, I'm gonna tell them how I'm feeling. Adele's album, 30, 30? 30 had me messed up. I listened to the album once and I could not listen to it again until like six or seven months later because I was like, it was just too close to home for me. Like it was just too close to home. I think because we broke up when I turned 30 and oh my God, it was just what the hell. <laughs> now I listen to it and I'm like at peace. Now that I'm at peace with everything, I listen to it, but ugh. It had your girl messed up for a minute there. I definitely went through the blues of like, I'm 30, you know. When I turned 30, my dad actually called me and was like, hey, we have to have a conversation. You know, my dad's African, he's an African dad. So he was like, you know, after a certain time, it starts to get a little hard to like have children. And I'm just like, really? This is the conversation you're having with me the day of my birthday? <laughs> And you know, thankfully I brushed it off, but honestly it was probably one of those things, times where I was just like, you know, um, suppressing, you know? I should have probably told him like, no, it's not the time for that conversation, sir. Yes, I definitely know about my ovaries. I know what my ovaries are telling me. I am, I, they live inside me, I house them. So yeah, like I said, if you're going through this and you feel like you have no one, don't be surprised if people actually finally come out of the woodwork and be there for you. Start by opening up just even a little bit. Tell them like actually what's going on, even if it's just a little bit. Like it took me so long to tell people that I was even going through a breakup. I waited three months to tell anyone in my life. Like, <laughs> that's crazy, right? Why? <laughs> For three months, I, I sat in that sadness alone. One of my resolutions this year is just being a lot more honest with myself about my feelings. And if someone's willing to be there for me and I'm willing to, and I'm feeling safe and comfortable letting them be there for me, I'll let them. If this video isn't a testament to growth and learning about yourself, I don't know what is. I'm really proud of myself.